So now we're going to go out to Wheeling, Illinois, to the Pinball Expo held out in Wheeling, Illinois. So let's go on in. Okay, here we are at the Pinball Expo, and I am with Rob Burke. Rob, nice to see you today. Uh, great event. Now let's hear about this. How did this whole Pinball Expo get started? It was just a passion of mine, pinball, all my life, and I decided that I'm going to take that passion to the next level, and I want to honor my heroes who were the designers and the artists. And the first show was 1985. I thought that was it, but the response was so strong. We're still doing it, and this year will be our 34th year. Oh, excellent. Now, what goes on at the Expo? Uh, we have seminars. We have an autograph session where you can actually meet the, the pinball artists and designers. And then we all be, have all these tournaments going on, from, uh, whether it be arcade tournaments, uh, video machines, pinball machines, uh, ball bowler machines, just about everything. So there's so much going on. Plus, we have an exhibit hall where games are for sale. And for one price, you can sit here and play pinball all night. And then, uh, so not only you got the pinballs, but you got the video games here as well. Right. So this is something new we're trying with the video machines. And uh, if it takes off like we think it's going to, we'll continue to do this every year. And we're going to have a tournament. And like this gentleman here won this uh, this beautiful deal here. Uh, I don't even know how he can hold it up, actually. Uh, hold on. Uh, oh, my God. Uh, hold on. This is very, very heavy. But uh, we're going to continue to have these tournaments and get people involved. Right. And for those who want more information, is there a website or a Facebook? It's uh, www.pinballexpo.com. Okay, here we are at the Pinball Expo, and it wouldn't be complete with this great ballroom of video games with uh, Doc Mac from uh, Galloping Ghost. Doc, what a great event today. Uh, what do you think of the event so far today? Oh, it's been amazing. It's been great to catch up with so many people from the pinball and video game community, see so many uh, amazing industry people, and play some amazing pinball games and video games. How did you get involved with this event? Uh, Rob Burke, uh, I've known him for the last several years, and he asked if we would come and support and bring some games from the Galloping Ghost Arcade, and we tried to uh, bring some rare stuff and some one-of-ones and uh, some games that we thought everybody might like. But isn't that kind of neat that other arcade uh, throughout uh, the Midwest are popping up as well? Absolutely. We've been uh, very quick to help other arcades, and it's so great to see so many popping up all over not only the Chicagoland area, but all over... Not, and not even only the U.S., but worldwide. So. Let's talk about Galloping Ghost. Um, how did you get started with that? Uh, it started, well, Galloping Ghost Productions was the first company that started back in 1994. And then we opened up the Galloping Ghost Arcade in 2010. And uh, it's kind of grown from there. Uh, we opened up Galloping Ghost Reproductions, Galloping Ghost Gamma, and are opening up Galloping Ghost Pinball next. Yeah, because I've been there. It's been expanding ever since. It has. It's uh, just due to the fan support and the community and so many people coming out and wanting to play these old, like these great old games. Uh, it's allowed us to keep growing. And uh, if those, someone want more information about Galloping Ghost, is there a um, website or a Facebook page? Yeah, you can check us out at uh, gallopingghost.com or gallopingghostarcade.com or find us on Facebook and you can search for Galloping Ghost Arcade or Galloping Ghost Productions. Okay, here we are at the Video Game Pitball Expo and I'm with your name. Uh, my name's Daniel. Daniel, Sam. Daniel, uh, what do you think of the expo today? Uh, you know, it's my first time at the expo, and uh, I loved it. It was great. Great people, great environment. There were uh, a lot of things I didn't get to see ever, and uh, it was awesome. It was awesome to experience it, and I'm definitely going to be coming back next year for sure. Uh, you won a belt? Uh, let's hear about this. Yeah, this belt. Uh, I ended up entering a... Uh, a uh, little tournament for 10 games. Uh, a couple of these games I actually had experience with because I played, they showed up at the Galloping Ghost uh, T20 tournament. So a couple of them you can't, they're pretty rare. Uh, I came across them thanks to that tournament. So I did have a bit of experience, but there are a couple I went into, uh, actually it was my first time playing them, like Gunsmoke. I, uh, I never played Gunsmoke before. So uh, <laughs> that, was, that wasn't easy. <laughs> What's one of your favorite games you like to play? Uh, in the tournament or just in general? Just in general. Uh, one of my favorites that I love to play is uh, Initial D. It's a really fun racing game. And then there's also uh, a skating game, which I haven't been able to find. Most of the places that had them, it's gone, called Top Skater. It was one in the, from the 90s. I played it when I was a kid a lot. And I uh, love that game. Love it. Whenever I get a chance to play it, I, uh, I got to put some quarters in it. And what system? Is it an arcade stand? An arcade stand. Arcade. You actually stand on, a, you stand on a skateboard to play it. And you uh, jump, uh, jump like, the, and when you jump, the players do tricks on the screen. Very, very cool. Is pinball? Is there a certain pinball game you like to play? Yes, uh, my all-time favorite is Metallica. Uh, Metallica is my favorite pinball machine. 
Uh, I think a close second would probably be, uh, I'd have to say ACDC. Well, thank you so much for coming to this expo. It's a great event. Thanks so much for talking to us today. Oh, thank you so much. I'm glad I got a chance to get this interview with you. Right, and congratulations. Thank you. Right. What's your name? Uh, Paul Zimmerman. Paul, what booth are we at today? We are at my my booth. Uh, I'm a world champion and um, for a bunch of Atari 2600 games. Uh, I actually sell ones that I signed for customers to stop by. Um, and I'm actually a card number one. There's a whole series of trading cards, uh, video games, and also pinball. And there's over 3,000 cards, and I'm a uh, card number one. Now you're in a champion of uh, pinball or arcade games? Actually, home council mostly. I, I, I play it all. Really? But yeah, official got records I have just for home council. Um, where did this all start? Oh, probably in 1980. Really? Yeah. What's one of your favorite uh, home console game and why? Oh, that's a good question. Um, well, uh, hmm. Probably maybe Demon Attack. It's an iMagic game. Yeah, this one I played often when I was a kid, and I just got this record for it uh, a few years ago. Now, when you get the record, or do you go online on who that who's the most? How do you rank yourself? Well, uh, Twin Galaxies is a company that does. Uh, they they cover console games, arcade games, and pinball games, and uh, pretty much you got to record yourself playing the whole game. And then uh, before they had referees that would uh, you send mail in the tape to them, and they would watch it. But now there's new owners, and now it's kind of different now. Now you pretty much have to upload your video onto their website. Now everyone in the community votes. And if they think that's a record, agree that there's no cheating, it's correct, then they vote yes. And then depending on how many votes you get, you know, and also uh, it could be declined. So if enough people say no, it's not a record. Well, if you had to choose, what's one of your favorite uh, home console game? Game or system? Atari 2600 is probably close to number one. That was my first system. Um, and then I, I really enjoyed the Nintendo Wii because uh, it, it was pretty uh, simple. Most of the games are pretty simple for, um, like the Atari 2600 was simple and fun. The Nintendo Wii was simple and fun too, I believe. That's what I feel. Uh, and your favorite game? Uh, probably the Demon Attack. <laughs> Uh, also, uh, Berserk. All right. Well, on that note, I want to thank you, uh, Paul, for coming on down to this event. Uh, it's a great uh, uh, booth you got here, and thanks so much thank for talking with us today. You're welcome. Jim Shelberg. Jim, what booth are we at today? Uh, we're at the Pin Game Journal booth. The Pin Game Journal is a magazine for pinball collectors. It has all sorts of history stuff, lots of great pictures, and we're here to support the hobby of pinball collecting. Such a big event. Why has pinball been uh, around all these years? Uh, people have nostalgia for what they did as a kid. And a lot of the people that are in this room grew up playing pinball. And then one day, all the pinball machines that used to be in every corner store, restaurant, and bar just disappeared. But the memory of the machines is still in people's heads. And this expo this weekend is so people can relive their youth. Do you have a favorite pinball you like to play? Yes, uh, I like Gottlieb's Mayfair. It was the first game I played. I really love that game. So uh, those who want to read the journal, is it online or is it you, uh, how do you how do you get get a hold of it? Uh, we have a website and we also have subscriptions available. You just need to go Google pinball pin game journal. And I am with your name. Kim Lerman. Kim, what booth are we at today? Uh, this is Lermods. And what is Lermod? Uh, we make add-ons, lighted add-ons for your pinball machine, so you can customize it to make it unique just for you. And that also makes the pinball game more attractive. Yes, yes, exactly. So we, we basically, our motto is we light you up, we light up the dark areas of the game. So we, we light up the, the trough area where the flippers are, the backboard area, which is usually dark. We light up the trans lights behind the art back there. 
and then we add toys to the game that are that complement the actual theme and they light up. A lot of them are interactive, a lot of them fade in and out, or some of them just stay lit. Then there's the lighting mods that we also add to the game just to, you know, we have under cabinet lighting as well. Pretty much anything to make it pop. And uh, what do you think of the uh, expo today? It's terrific. We love, we've really enjoyed it. We came a long way. We're from New Jersey, so yeah. Um, if someone wants more information about Lure Mods, do you have a website? Uh, yes, we do. It's LurMods.com, L-E-R-M-O-D-S.com. Well, we thank you so much for coming out to the expo, and thanks so much for talking with us today. Thanks for having and us. And with your name? Christopher Franchi. Christopher, what great artwork you have here as well. Uh, let's hear about this. Uh, what's your booth all about today? Oh, well, uh, it's all about my artwork. I got a little bit of everything. Uh, I'm here because I do artwork for pinball machines. I've done a 1966 Batman and the Guardians of the Galaxy, and I've got two new games coming out in the next couple of months. And uh, so, yeah, they asked me here to show off some of my artwork, so that's why I'm here. Very colorful as well. What, uh, what do you use to, uh, for your artwork for paint? Uh, primarily do uh, acrylics, colored pencils, gouache, stuff like that. Um, also, I use obviously Photoshop, so I'll do uh, original illustrations and then scan them into Photoshop. And a lot of times I do the backgrounds in Photoshop or whatever, you know, just because it's modern tools, you know, makes it easier. How'd you get involved in our work? Ever since I was a kid. Right out of high school, I started working for a, a menu company and then a t-shirt company and uh, just ball kept rolling from there, just something I always wanted to do. So, Well, with all these pinballs and all this attendance, why is there uh, that pinballs have been uh, around all these years? I think because it's, uh, you know, it's a tactile game, uh, you know, you feel more a part of it than a video game. Video game seems to be like something that's almost plotted out for you. And you can go up, down, or right, or left, and that's it. But pinball's real. Uh, you know, the ball rolls around. You control it by tilting the game. You can nudge the ball. Uh, and it, it's it's interesting, fun to look at, you know, with the lights and everything, you know, it's, as they say, a world under glass. Um, so, you know, whatever, if it's Star Wars or something you care about, it's like this little box of lights with fun stuff, you know, the, uh, with a uh, uh, license that, you, you know, you love or whatever, whether it's a superhero or a movie. Um, and I just, I don't think that'll ever go away. It's something that's fun to do. You know, you can play up to four players, so you can have, you know, three of your buddies with you. And, and it's just, it's more conversational and fun and interactive than a video game is. So I think it's always a place for it. Well, you come into play because as I look around the room, it is the artwork that has to attract the person to come to the game as well. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, it's the first thing they see, and, uh, you know, it's it's what's going to bring that property to life for them in the game. So it's obviously very important, and I'm glad that I'm the guy that provides it. <laughs> no, again, it's just absolutely terrific. Uh, what's one of your favorite uh, pinball games? My favorite pinball game. I, I'm going to say Batman 66, not because I drew it, but because I love it. I, I've loved Batman since I was a kid. That was my first game uh, that I designed. And uh, and I just think what, what everyone else brought to the table building that game, uh, you know, the game designer and the people who do the code and all that did it. Inter, uh, just integrating the property into that game, they did just a perfect job. So I think it's the perfect game. Well, once again, Chris, this is an excellent artwork that you have for the pinball uh, games and your booth as well. Do you have like a website or a Facebook page? I have a Facebook page, which is MetaLuna5 Media, M-E-T-A-L-U-N-A, -A, the number five in the word media. And that's where you can see all my artwork. Well, we thank you so much for coming to this, this expo. It's just a great event. Thanks so much for talking to us today. Thank you. And I'm with your name. Jaden Burke. Great uh, event today, maybe for those who, those who haven't been to the Pinball Expo, what is it? Pinball Expo, it's uh, honestly it's for everyone because we have tons of pinball machines here, a lot of arcade games, tons of vendors, tournaments, it's just a great time for everyone. Great, great. Uh, about how many pinballs would you say roughly are here? There's a, a lot here. Uh, I would say uh, well over 200, 300, it's, uh, we got a lot of games here. Now how did this get started? Well, my dad, uh, 34 years ago, he was in a pinball league, I believe, or a pinball club in Ohio, 
and he proposed the idea to them. And he said, you know, I want to start a pinball show where people around the country, you know, meet and everyone that comes from around the you know, world and just you know, has a great time. And so he thought about the idea and he made it happen and it's going 34 years strong and next year is 35th year, so it's keep on going. Here you have games from 60s, 70s, 80s and people still love them. I think uh, pinball, it's really for everyone. You never know what way uh, the ball will bounce. And it's just, there's so many cool features to it. I just, I love it and everyone here loves it too. There's a lot more information about the Pinball Expo. Is there a website or Facebook? Yeah, there's a website, uh, pinballexpo.com. We also have Instagram, Twitter, so come check us out. Well, it's a great event today. Come on out to the Pinball Expo, and thanks so much for talking with us today. Yep, all right, thank you. I appreciate it.